Bianco. The Bianco and Company Studios. Z1013. Join Cammie and Gary weekday mornings for the McDonald's Impossible Question. Only on the Bluffs at Music Station Z1013. All cars are racing against time. Some are just doing better than others. Right now at Firestone Complete Auto Care, buy three, get one free on durable Firestone Destination LE2 tires. A comfortable ride for your SUV or CUV. Firestone Complete Auto Care. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Offer valid March 1st through March 31st. In-store installation fees apply. See store for full details. Getting out of the military, I was missing this camaraderie. It's frustrating when you try and talk to people that don't understand. I still had the anger, I still had the uh, addictions, but we didn't talk about that. Came to a point where it's like, okay, I really need to talk to somebody about this. Family more or less encouraged me, you know, go, go to the VA. It's okay to go get help. It's okay to talk to people, because it takes true strength to ask for help. Hear veterans' real stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Guns, ammo, and knives. That's right, gun enthusiasts. It's that time of the year again when Bluff Shooters puts on their annual spring gun show this weekend only. Located at the Event Center in Mitchell. Admission is only $5 per person. Saturday doors open from 8 to 4 and Sunday 9 to 3. Breakfast and lunch will be available. So come early, buy, sell, and trade the day away at 200 tables. The Bluff Shooters Wild Brassica Area Gun Show, March 7th and 8th at the Mitchell Event Center. Be there. Are you looking for a job with part-time hours and paid training? Well, a growing cleaning business is hiring day, evening, and weekend positions. You must have reliable transportation and a cell phone. Be able to pass a drug test and background check to be able to start work immediately. If you have those qualifications, then we want you to contact Yvonne Connery at 631-0834 or 641-4452. Phone calls only. No text. just like a big family here. I just love working here. I don't know if I could ever say enough good things about working here. I love my job and I tell everybody that. Everybody here is constantly working toward one goal to make us be the best we can be and provide good service. They have great incentives. If you want to make a little bit extra money, here's the place to come. They offer overtime and you just cannot beat it. Come join us here at Vertex. I'm looking forward to seeing you walk through our door and joining our team. Join the Vertex family today. Go to vertexgroup.com backslash careers or call 877-719-3900. Now is the time to think about your spring planting seed needs. Wesco carries a full line of seed, including alfalfa and a variety of other forage crops. Our large selection of alfalfa seed can help you maximize tonnage and increase relative feed values for your livestock feeding rations. For those farmers looking for spring wheat, we carry a variety of certified wheat with the option of seed treatment. Call your Wesco agronomist today to order your spring seeds for 2015. Wesco, service, solutions, success. Wesco is your best value through and through. It's back. The Class Act has leader duo sets. That's right, Biolage fans. The leader duo sets are back. Hydrosource shampoo and conditioning balm and Color Lash shampoo and conditioner. Each set is just $34.95. These sets are going to fly off the shelf, so make sure to stock up while supplies last. The Class Act is bringing you great savings, so don't miss out on the leader duo sets. Stop in and see the girls today to get your leader duo sets and make an appointment for your new look for the new year. The Class Act, 1916 Maine and Torrington. C-1013.
C1013. It's time now for the community calendar presented by the Emporium Coffee House and Cafe on First Avenue in Scotts Bluff, where lunch and dinner are more than just food. It's a fine dining experience. Stop into the Emporium and see why they made the list of the 10 best restaurants and dining spots in Nebraska. The UPS Dodgeball Tournament to benefit United Way of Western Nebraska will be taking place on March 21st at the Prairie Winds Community Center in Bridgeport. Even if you're not able to play but really want to help, volunteers are needed and welcome. For more information, contact Brad at 249-2321. This community calendar announcement has been brought to you by the Emporium Coffee House and Cafe on First Avenue in Scotts Bluff. Before you attend our local community events, stop into the Emporium and enjoy a fine dining experience and see why they made the list of Nebraska's 10 best restaurants and dining spots. The Emporium on First Avenue in Scotts Bluff. Doctor, I think we're losing her. Nurse, get me the jumpers. She's flatlining. Is your vehicle flatlining? It's time to take your car to Ken the Car Doctor, located at 2302 Avenue I, Scotts Bluff, where they specialize in paint repair, interior repair, detailing, paintless dent removal, oil changes, and not to mention all makes and model engine repair. Stop looking around for the answer and let Ken the Car Doctor put all your car problems to bed. Trust Ken the Car Doctor, 2302 Avenue I, Scotts Bluff, or give them a call, 631-2484. With spring upon us, now is the time to break out the long-handled tools and get your lawn in shape for spring. If any of those tools need to be replaced, stop by your local Hardware Hank, where you can find a wide selection of quality Trooper lawn and garden long-handled tools. Hardware Hank will help you get your gardening into full swing. You've got a lot more going for you in Hank. Hardware Hank. Stop by the Sinclair Super Shop before your next get-together and stock up on the coldest beer in town at great prices. Don't forget Sinclair Super Shop for quality gasoline, fountain drinks, munchies, Nebraska Lottery, Powerball, and Pick 5, liquor, wine, and your smoker-friendly items. If you're 60 and older, make sure you come in for Senior Wednesday. You'll get four cents off every gallon of gas and free popcorn. It's Sinclair Super Shop on the corner of Avenue Y and West Overland in Scotts Bluff, your get-together headquarters. What time is it? 
It's game time. Game Time Cards and Collectibles has everything you need to get your game on. Stop in today and check out the multiplayer gaming stations with Xbox, Wii, PS4, and more. They also carry video games from Atari to current and card games, including Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering. Game Time also buys, sells, and trades. Don't miss out. Game Time is located at 1509 Broadway and open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and closed on Sundays. Game Time. 1509 Broadway or call 633 Game. The station is playing all the hits. C1013. He's the Bluff Sports Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cougar Basketball right here on Z1013. It is Region 9 Tournament Playtime semifinal action coming your way tonight as the WNCC Lady Cougars host the Central Wyoming Lady Wrestlers here tonight at Cougar Palace. And again, a semifinal game. NJC has already punched their ticket into tomorrow night's championship round as they defeated Northwestern Wyoming 79-65 to in the game that was played right here before our nightcap with WNCC and also, as I mentioned, Central Wyoming here tonight from Cougar Palace. Rumor has it that uh, this year is an at-large year for the Region 9 and both teams in the championship game should make it in. One, of course, with the championship and the other one with perhaps an at-large bid, but uh, there is still work yet to be done. One of these teams is going to have to be able to fold tonight as Central Wyoming on quite a tear. They've got a couple of wins already here in the Region 9 tournament, one by 20 over Trinidad State, knocking off the Trinidad State Trojans 67 to 47 on Tuesday and then turning around and defeating Otero Junior College last night. 75 to 54. Central Wyoming is a team. As uh, we get into the back rack spray game show at Hengenall High School and WNCC students, show your student IDs and get 15% off every meal at back racks. The best lunch specials in town. Back racks located at 1402 East 20th Street in Scott Club. In a moment, we'll welcome Dave Runs into the Logos broadcast booth and get into the starting lineups. Brought to you by the Zone at Scott Club screen printing. But before we get into those things, let's take a momentary timeout. Two minutes and back with the back rack spray game show after this. You're listening to Cougar Basketball on. Z1013. Your employees have been working so hard this year and you want to do something to show your appreciation. Let our team help your team. Scott's Bluff Screen Printing has the answer. Company jackets, polos, coffee mugs, phone covers, you name it, we can make it. Let Scott's Bluff Screen Printing help you come up with that special gift that says, we appreciate you. From banners to business cards, corporate apparel and gifts, we are here to help. Come work with the professionals. Scott's Bluff Screen Printing, downtown Scott's Bluff. 
Cash back and purchasing fuel go together at Westco. Westco provides 24-hour fueling in Alliance, Crawford, Gordon, Hay Springs, Hemingford, Rushville, Slafter Oil and Scotts Bluff, and Frontier Martin Torrington. As you travel around the region, there's always a Westco store close to you. By using your Westco charge card to purchase fuel, you are able to quickly get back on the road, pay once a month, and receive cash back through our patronage dividends. Call the Westco office today at 308-762-3112 to request a Westco charge card. Westco, service, solutions, success. Logos on 10th Street in Gearing. BSM is the Bluff Sports Network. And welcome back to the Back Racks pregame show. Michael Reed along with you from the Logos Broadcast booth. Joining me now is Dave Bruns. And from screen printing to embroidery, Logos has you covered. Shop the showroom or get something custom made of Logos at 1344 10th Street in Gearing. And also welcome in our engineer producer back on the board, Tiffany Hopkins. As they get into the starting lineups here at Cooten Palace, we'll do the same. Starting lineups brought to you by The Zone. It's got for screen printing in business for the last 20 years. Their screen printing headquarters stop into The Zone at 1813 Broadway in downtown Scotts Bluff. First off, starting for the visiting Central Wyoming Lady Wrestlers. They come in at 21-9 and nine on the season, 10-4 and four in Region 9 play. Number 15, Stephanie Smith. It's not a misprint. Six foot six post player, sophomore out of Mountain View, Wyoming. Number 20, Lashira Butler, a 5'2 guard, sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida. Number 23, Jolana Sazu, a 5'7 guard, sophomore out of Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Number 32, Kiara Skinner, a 6'4 forward, sophomore out of Cody, Wyoming. And number 34, Hannah Beattie, a 5'10 forward, sophomore out of Brisbane, Australia. Starting tonight for the 29-2 Cougars, 11-1 in Region 9 play. Number 4, Liz Dogan, 6'2 sophomore out of Ismir, Turkey. Number 21, Avi Lujan, 5'11 sophomore out of Brighton, Colorado. Number 22, Angela V. Hill, 5'6 sophomore out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Number 24, Callie Federson getting the start tonight, the 5'9 freshman out of Rollins, Wyoming. And number 42, Lily Havili, a 6'1 sophomore out of Salt Lake City, Utah. And that's a look at the starting lineups brought to you by The Zone. It's got plus screen printing in business for the last 20 years. Your screen printing headquarters stop into The Zone at 1813 Broadway in downtown Scotts Bluff. And as I said, joining me now is Dave Bruns. Dave, you had a chance to see this team in action last night. Impressive 30-point victory over Lamar after the forfeit win over Little Bighorn earlier this week. But I'll tell you, this is going to be a tough test for the Lady Cougars here tonight if they want to move into tomorrow night's championship round against NJC. Absolutely. they got to do exactly what they did last night. 74 rebounds last night. That wasn't a misprint. 74 rebounds. They're going to have to work on the glass against this team. This is a big Central Wyoming team. I've watched them a couple times. they got a couple of great players. they got size and speed on this team. So they're going to have to give them everything they got to win this game tonight. And especially six foot six Stephanie Smith, they're going to have to try to contain her in the post. Layla Havili will have her hands full tonight. As the Cougars do get the opening tip in the front court, Angela V will pull the trigger from 12. Rebound still on the floor, and it's going to be controlled by the wrestlers. Back the other way comes LaShira Butler. The sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida. Just underway here at Cougar Palace, still scoreless on the Alex TLC scoreboard as the wrestlers now move it around in the front court, wearing all black with white numerals and orange trim, taking the shot up and good for the wrestlers was Hannah Beatty. She will strike first. The sophomore out of Brisbane makes it 2 to nothing. wrestlers on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Back the other way come the Cougars. Up top, Lily Havili, long two-pointer right through the cylinder. Nice shot from Lily. Showing a little bit of range. And like you say last night, board work was exemplary. And I'll tell you, I, I heard you mention that they had not shot a three deep into that game. Coach Dave Harnish forcing them to work that paint, work from inside. And 
I'll tell you, that's probably why they ended up with 74 rebounds last night, just really crushing it inside. Well, Lamar was such a fast team. They're a fast break team. They get they get back quickly. And so Coach Harness was, hey, let's let's beat these guys in the paint. We know that we can. We've got them in size. 5'11 was their biggest player last night. Right. Well, so it, the Cougars were able to really muscle them and do what they wanted to do, especially in that second half. Well, and of course, Khadijah Hill averaging 20.9 points a game, hit 41 the night before. Right. So obviously that was... A big twist for him last night, too, but coming away with a win against Lamar, but still plenty of business left to be attended to as the wrestlers come up empty on their offensive possession. Back to the way come the Cougars. We are all tied up at two apiece. Nice feet, nice feet underneath to Liz Dogan from Angela V. Hill. She adds to her assist category on the season. V. Hill number 12 in Region 9, averaging 3.2 assists per game, and she gets one right there to Dogan as the Cougars take the lead 4-2 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Just two minutes gone here in the first half of play from Cougar Palace. Another note from last night's game, they were able to get the big girl, uh, V Hill, Khadija V Hill. They were able to get her into foul trouble early in that game. Now, you'll see if they do that to the, uh, to the big. Um, I don't even know what to call her. She's, she's <laughs> she tall. is definitely heads and tails above everybody else. Again, another lost trip as Butler misses the shot on the other side for Central Wyoming. But on this side, Abby Lujan with no trouble from the field. That was Abby all night last night. She was hitting those mid-range jumpers like crazy. And she is. She's got pretty good range, and she's also pretty deadly on the boards. And right there, that two-pointer makes it a 6-2 to two advantage for the Cougars here in half number one. Spinning it underneath. Shot taken by Stephanie Smith off the Jolana Sazu feed. Looks like Smith Abby's going to connect, get, but she will be fouled. Looks like Abby's going to get called for that first foul here. Well, and Abby giving up about seven inches in the matchup, so not a whole lot she could do there, but try to slow the big girl down. As Smith's first shot is up and rims out, no good. Six to two, the score remains on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Abby's going to have to play clean tonight. They're going to need her down the stretch in this basketball game. And Smith hits the second. So one of two from the line for the six foot six Stephanie Smith. And it's six to three on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. 17 15 left to play here in the first half. Cougars with it once again in the front court. Dogan goes up top to V Hill, far side. Federson. Federson penetrates along the baseline, runs into a double team, has to dish back out to Dogan. Dogan now top of the key finds Lujan. Back out to Dogan. Dogan now will work inside the paint, blocked by Stephanie Smith. And that's going to be the trouble trying to square off against that six foot six post player down there those little runners in the lane are not going to be an easy shot tonight i like the cougars approach to this they'll go right after her and that's what exactly what they did right there they got rejected but they're going to tell her that they're not afraid to go after her. butler now with a pass underneath knocked out of bounds by havili it will remain with the wrestlers and that's going to be uh, kind of the telltale pattern, too, to try to keep Stephanie Smith quiet underneath. You're going to have to continue to get into those passing lanes and not give the big girl open looks underneath. Shot up off the glass. Speaking of open looks, Jolana Sazu will hit for the wrestlers, and it's a one-point game, 6-5 to five on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Cougars quickly back into the front court. Havili with it outside. Now she'll come to V Hill. And Federson on the right wing. Back up top now to Havili. She'll try to penetrate. No, no room. She'll come back out to Dogan. Dogan now takes it in, slices and dices in between the defenders and takes it up for two. Eight to five on the Alex TLC scoreboard. They are going to need Dogan to be that aggressive all night long too, especially down low. Shot up, no good. Put back Smith, no good. Rebound taken up by Skinner. Skinner's put back is good and the foul. So three chances on that trip for the Lady Wrestlers. And it turns into points for Kiara Skinner and a trip to the line to make it three and perhaps tie this game up at eight apiece. <coughs> Size was one thing we were worried about in this game as you've seen Butler drive the lane and put the ball up. All, that's all she needs to do. She's got some big help in there with Skinner and Smith. And that takes a little of the pressure off too when you can just try to work it inside and know that you've got Smith at six foot six to get up there with those long, lanky arms and perhaps pull down the rebound. However, on that trip, field goal shard, the free throw shot, no good. Back the other way, Havili just decides to pull the trigger from the top of the key, and she will hit. Three-point game once again, 10-7 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Back into the front court comes Butler. Off to Skinner now, back to Butler. Comes around to Sazu, screen, shot up in the paint, no good. But the foul is going to be called. Liz Dogan pleading her case. And that's what Butler is going to do all night. She is just going to, she's just, she's a lot like Aslan. She's just going to go right in there and she's going to pick up most of those calls. Well, just a five foot two guard. Obviously, she's going to try to squirrel her way underneath there as much as possible. And 
just like that. She doesn't have enough strength to get the shot up there, but she does get hacked, and the first free throw will go through. And that foul was called against Angela V. Hill. Havili will sit, replaced early here by Noah Talia. Like you mentioned, Talia having a big game last night. Tell you what, she was a punching bag a couple of times. She got hit pretty hard. Both shots will go for Butler, so the sophomore guard makes it a one-point game. Once again, 10-9 on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. Back into the front court, Dogan head fakes the three. Instead comes to Hill. Hill now swinging it back and forth. Finds Lujan on the right wing. She'll look down low. Dogan, too much defense, nothing there. Federson now, she'll swing one up off the glass. No good, but Federson is going to go to the line to shoot two. That's and what Callie brings to this team. She's going to go right at him. That foul will go against Jolana Sazu, her first. Really outside of Stephanie Smith. I mean, she's got the main size for this team. Otherwise, they've got Kiara Skinner at six foot, a couple of 5'11 girls. But other than Stephanie Smith, they don't have a whole lot of size. So you would certainly think, especially if the Cougars can start getting Smith into some foul trouble here, they should have a little bit of freedom down low. As Federson hits both from the free throw line, free throws are obviously going to be extremely important here this evening as we find ourselves up by three. 12 to 9 on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. 15 10 remaining here in the first half. As again, slicing and dicing her way inside is Butler. Shot no good. Smith right there to put it back up. Her shot too strong. Rebound cleared by Dogan. So, so far, Smith not showing a whole lot of accuracy underneath. But just having that big frame underneath there is uh, enough of a tough task just to get around as it is. There's the matchup I was looking for. Butler and Sparks in this game. They're both quick. A uh, nice pass underneath to Sparks. But Sparks, again, finds that tall tower. Too much to overcome. And Stephanie Smith with another blocked shot. In comes Lindy Puckett to perhaps add that downtown threat. She will replace Abby Lujan. Cougar basketball here, still along the baseline with it is Federson. Ten seconds remain on the shot clock. Substitutions apparently just coming in willy-nilly at this point. <laughs> like they, yeah. Finally, I think uh, they will rest and get back to business here. Federson still trying to find somebody to go to. Just beats the five-second clock. Left wing finds Puckett. Seven seconds, six seconds. Now Sparks takes it inside, and a travel is going to be called. A move we've seen many players make many times this season doesn't always get called, but that time Sparks with a pretty obvious three-step. Arnish isn't liking it over there. He's asking what, what, where she made the call on that one. And he, he's, he, I think he's trying to plead the case that Butler's doing the same thing. Well, and that's what I'm saying. You see that move a lot out yep. of many players. Don't always get the call, but Sparks gets caught for it there. Underneath, nice pass to Smith again. Misses the shot, then just heaves one up. Misses that too, but it's going to go out of bounds. They're going to say last touch by WNCC. Wow. That <laughs> so the ball goes back to the wrestlers with 30 seconds on the shot clock. 12 to 9 the score. Inbounds pass. Central Wyoming finds Jocelyn Jones now back out to Sazu. Sazu trying to penetrate in the paint. Shot knocked out of her hands, and they're going to say contact made on the arm. I think that one's going to go against Pedersen. That will go against Pedersen. That'll be her first. And going back to Lindy Puckett coming into this game last night, the, the one thing that I've been saying about this game is they're going to go into their bench, and I, I like our chances when we go into the bench. As uh, Susan's got one-handed one shot. shot there. Effective, though. She hits the first. Makes it 12 to 10 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. And another one handed shot. This one in and out, no good. Talia there with a rebound for the Cougars. And WNCC back the other way with a two point advantage. 12 to 10 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Six minutes gone here in the first half from Cougar Palace. Betterson swings it around far side to Talia. Lindy Puckett goes in motion down low, but Talia comes up to Dogan, top of the key instead. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Betterson near side. Now she'll look underneath, picks up her dribble. Runs out of room. Talia, top of the key. High arcing shot off the mark. And it's going to go out of bounds. Wow, what a good play by Hannah Sparks as she bounces it right off the front of Jocelyn Jones. Heads up play there by Hannah Sparks to keep it alive. But there's only one second left on the shot clock. Yeah, have to be a clutch I don't and know why they here. don't have anybody in the corner right now gonna have for to this be inbound. Quick. And that one bounces off of the wrestlers again out of bounds. Still a second on the shot clock. And we'll see here as Federson tries to get the inbounds play in motion. Shot in. Dogan just runs out of time. 
tried to take an extra step there. Dogan simply had enough time to grab it and shoot, but tries to work her way in for a cleaner shot, and she'll get called for the shot clock violation. Turnover gives it back to the wrestlers with 13.37 left to go in county here in the first half. I'm not sure Liz was aware of the shot clock when she yeah, took that. Yeah, she needed to be she needed to be aware. Federson was calling it out to everybody, too, just to make sure, but like say, Dogan didn't seem to be aware of it. The turnover sends the wrestlers the other way. Shot blocked, taken back up by Smith, and this time, not a real pretty shot. She just kind of heaves it up there, but that one will bounce through for her, and she ties the game at 12 apiece. Cougars back the other way, 13-10 to go here in the first half. Stand the Sparks left side. She'll go underneath to Dogan. Dogan gets some contact on the arm. They're going to call an offensive foul against Talia away from the ball? Yeah, I'm not quite wow. sure. I thought maybe they were calling that on Smith for the poke check. Well, there. yeah, it looked like Dogan got hit on the arm, and they call Federson actually. So well, I did not two. see what the foul was, but federson has got a quick two fouls here. And the wrestlers get the ball back once again. Tie game, chance to take the lead on this trip with under 13 minutes left to play. Hanabidi. Just about traveled right yeah, there. Yeah, she did. She's trying to keep that pivot foot down. Just does so. She gets the ball back left wing now. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Down low along the baseline. Has to dish back out to Skinner. Now back to Beattie it goes. Tries to feed it underneath. Tries to throw that needle to Smith. She's hurt. And though. Noah gets landed on by Smith. But good effort there by Noah to keep Smith from getting that basketball. Back the other way. Hannah Sparks with a slicing move up the left side of the lane. And she will hit to make it 14 to 12 on the Alex Steel C scoreboard, although the scoreboard right now reads 12 to 2. That's obviously not the case. <laughs> Tell you what, Noah Talia, one of the toughest players out there. She's up playing hard. She's working on Smith again. Underneath to Smith. Smith shot up again for all the point blank shots she's getting. She's not hitting, but Jocelyn Jones there, 5'9 post player, gets the rebound and the book back to tie this game back up at 14 apiece. Fast break the other way. Federson, long two pointer. That's money. She had time to eye that one up and make sure she was set. Gets a good clean shot and it goes through. Under 12 to play, 16-14 Cougars in a matchup that certainly is coming with the hype that it was intended to be. Number two in the north versus number one in the south as Casper, the number one seed, fell to Northwest Wyoming, who they themselves fell today against NJC. Shot up no good. Smith takes it back away from Liz Doga, or rather no Italia underneath there, and the wrestlers will get a... Fresh crack at the 30-second shot clock. Near side, Beatty goes up top, Jocelyn Jones. Jones looks down low, finds Beatty in the lane, but it bounces off of her leg and then off of a Cougar. Are they going to say, yeah, yeah they're going like to say that was off Dogan. I think they're going to call that off Liz. Substitutions coming in now as Avi Lujan and Lily. Goche Oslin, as well as Lily Avili into the game now. Talia will sit along with Dogan and Federson. So I hope Noah's all right over there. She's, she's grimacing pretty hard over there, yeah. sitting next to Coach T. She Hopefully got she's landed okay. on by a six foot six girl. That's can't feel too good. Eight seconds on the shot clock now as the wrestlers running out of time. Five seconds on the floor. Butler loses it, chases it down, but now and after it goes Sparks, and Sparks causes enough of a rip there. The shot clock has been going off. For the last five seconds, and the officials weren't calling it. Dave Harnish, not happy about that. Well, the whole crowd. Nobody not on happy. the floor paying attention to the shot clock violation, and now finally they come around to it. I'm not sure how they missed that loud horn. Uh, yeah, that's blowing uh, in your ear there. Kind of what it's for. <laughs> in any case, yeah, Butler lost the basketball, tracked See? it down, but Sparks was not just going to let her go over there and pick it up easily. So Sparks goes over there, causes her some trouble, and before Butler can get up the shot, the Horn had been blowing for about three seconds. In any case, shot clock violation gives it back to the Cougars. Sparks the other way. Now she'll swing it around, tries to take it left side. No good. Tried to take too much on herself that time. And now Sazu coming back quickly the other way for the wrestlers. Picks up her dribble right there with her as Oslin. Yeah, Goche playing tough defense on her. Lashira Butler against Sparks now. Butler works towards the right side of the floor. 16, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Butler now penetrates. Shot up high off the glass. No good. Rebound still on the floor. Bodies falling for it, and the wrestlers are going to come away from the scrum with it. Tanya Buss there, the sophomore out of Clayhawk, Alaska. Now poked away. Avi Lujan gets Butler's pass, and then Butler turns around and fouls her right afterwards. But Avi Lujan with a nice job there, anticipating that pass from Butler, knocking it away, and the five foot two Butler had no option but just turn around and get one of those runaway fouls. And that's going to be number one on Butler. Cougar basketball, 16-14, 10-20 remaining here in the first half of play. 
back and forth these two teams go. They might not want to leave Gauthier Tucking alone. Now for three. Top of the Lady arc. Lee. Perfect. Nothing but the bottom of the net on that one, and they're going to need a lot of that from Puckett here tonight. If they want to keep the Central Wyoming wrestlers at bay, 10.03 on the clock, 19.14 the score. Timeout called by Central Wyoming while we have a momentary timeout. want to thank all TLC for bringing you tonight's scoreboard. For makeup and beauty supplies, the spa services, including nails, hair, massage, even a garden center with flowers, shrubs, and more, the Lifestyle Center has you covered at 3109 Avenue B in Scotts Bluff. And right now, Dave, both of these teams going back and forth. It looks like neither one getting a whole lot done in the post. It seems like the size would certainly favor the wrestlers down low, but Smith has missed a few key shots down below, and then the Cougars have come away. There's been a couple of offensive rebounds for Central Wyoming. But right now, it seems like if the Cougars can extend that floor a little bit and start opening up the field, yeah. especially hitting from downtown, they could really start taking control of this basketball game. Well, obviously, Coach Harness is taking the leash off a little bit there, letting Lindy shoot. And, you know, kind of un, un, unleashing the fury as Lindy can do. And, that, that you know, that's going to that's gonna prove big for the Cougars tonight if they can hit those outside shots. But they are going to have to still work in the paint. And I know that that's still weighing on their minds. Midway through the first half, Butler tries to penetrate. She'll dish back outside instead. Now gets the ball back. Ten on the shot clock. Eight seconds. She'll penetrate back outside once again. Still working around. Butler with three seconds loses the basketball. Tracks it down 2 1. She'll take a long three pointer at the buzzer. No good, but I'll tell you, that one almost looked like it was going to go through. Yeah, we had a pretty good line on that one, didn't we? Now B Hill back the other way. Nice pass to Havili underneath. She misses the point blank range layup. And it's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Havili. Missed opportunity there by the Cougars to extend that lead to seven as Havili just misses right underneath the basket. She doesn't miss many of those. Goche with a nice pass underneath there. And you wonder if Lili might not have been quite ready for it, but, I mean, she got it and put it up. It just wasn't quite enough. Now Goche and Sparks kind of putting up a little bit of resistance there, but now they'll back off into the half-court defense quickly with 9.20 left to play. Five-point Cougar lead as Butler will bring it into the front court now for the wrestlers. Again, tries to penetrate five foot two, but she plays above those shoes. Shot misses, though. Rebound taken by Havili. I don't know if they're on pace to hit 74 rebounds again tonight, but at least cleaning up the glass there as Goche Oslin tries to clear out the offense. Lou Hahn near side now to puck at 18 seconds on the shot clock. Finds Oslin. That's, That's a mismatch. As Oslin squares up against Smith, but wisely kicks it back out to Havili, who this time hits from the floor. And it's 21-14 Cougars on the Alex TLC scoreboard. 8.45 left to play here in the first half as Butler will bring it up to the front court. She draws a double team with Lujan and Oslin. Now back out left side. Three-pointer is money. Hannah Beatty hits from downtown, and that's going to be a bit of an equalizer there. She brings the wrestlers back within four. 21-17 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Puckett with it, right wing. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Still trying to find some help, and she's going to get called for the five-second. Just held the ball too long and nowhere to go. And Puckett with the turnover there gives the ball back to the wrestlers with 8.21 left to go here in the first half. 21-17 to the score. So far, foul is not a huge issue for either team, although the Cougars do sit with five and just two for Central Wyoming. Into the front court now comes Heather Towns, and she has her pass knocked away by Hannah Sparks. It will remain with the wrestlers in their front court. 21 seconds on the shot clock, 8-12 on the first half game clock. Inbounds pass as Beatty gets the basketball. She'll take it right into the paint. Shot up, no good. Rebound taken away by Lindy Puckett off to Jocelyn Joan Miss. Good board there by Lindy Puckett. Back the other way come the Cougars. Oslin tries to take it all the way underneath against Smith. Again, not a good matchup there. For Oslin, as she stands 5-3 against six foot six Smith, and that time just not able to get it over the tower. But a long-distance pass off the mark intended for Beattie from Skinner, but that goes way past Beattie's hands. No chance of tracking that one down as they try to break the pressure provided by the Cougars. And the Cougars get the turnover. Ball back, 7.45 to go. Four-point lead, 21-17 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. I love Coach Harnish's game plan here. Fight fire with fire. They're doing some pressing. They got their fastest guards out there playing with Butler so she's been ineffective with Goche Oslin and Hannah Sparks on the floor for the Cougars and they're playing outstanding right now. Lujan goes up top Oslin now Sparks penetrates she'll take it straight to Smith gets contact no call either way yeah and that could have gone either way just watches right the ball go down to the floor and back the other way come the wrestlers and again you're just not going to win that matchup against Smith you're going to have to try to work around her 
As Beatty tries to work her way in the lane, she'll get called for the travel. They should so right now for that. I, I never agreed with that. If you get called for a, a, a travel or whatever, don't shoot the basketball. Yeah. I mean, we saw Ange V Hill get get a delay a game or something called on her last night. I wasn't quite sure what was going on there, but I think that you know I've seen in the past they'll tee you up if you take a, take a shot after you've either committed a foul or a turnover. 7.05 left to go here in the first half of play. Cougars up for 21-17. Central Wyoming keeps getting little chances, but then mounting those turnovers on the other side, not able to capitalize. But now a steal is going to be taken. Suzu takes it right away from Hill the other way. Lujan with her step for step, and then Lujan comes down over the back. Suzu will go to the line to shoot two, misses the shot. But Lujan there just kind of using the body to try to get in the way and not allow her a clean shot. Yeah, I think that Abby was just going to try and cut her off at the pass, but she cut in underneath of yeah. her. And Abby, Abby did get all ball right there, but too much contact with the body. So, Jolana Sazu, first shot. Again, one handed effort. That went off the back iron. No good. I hope my stepdaughter's not watching this. This is interesting, I don't too. Want her to I've never one seen it. a one handed. Oh, I've, I've have you seen, seen the two handed bowler? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's amazing. But uh, just reminded me of that because typically you don't see two-handed bowlers. You don't typically see one-handed free-throw shooters, unless you're me. <laughs> so Zoom misses the, misses the first but hits the second, makes it a three-point game, 21-18, to 18, no pressure for the wrestlers. 6.45 left to go here in the first half. Pedersen looks over to get some instructions before she brings it up. Now comes around a Havili screen. Not a whole lot of room. She'll back it out. Now goes up to V-Hill, far side Dogan. Dogan looks down low, 15 on the shot clock. Dogan now back and forth. She goes right in front of Kiara Skinner. Now Dogan just a power move in the lane, misses the shot, still fighting for the rebound, but out of bounds it goes. And again, some contact made down there as Dogan goes down hard. She touches the ball last, and that's going to be wrestler basketball. As we just continue to go back and forth, neither team taking control of the ball game. Three points, the difference. 21-18 to 18 on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. 6-15 left to go here in the first half of play. Central Wyoming basketball. Up top, Sazu bounce pass far side to Skinner. Skinner now goes top of the key to Heather Townsend. Townsend finds Jocelyn Jones along the baseline. Shot miss. Smith, the putback, no good. Misses the second putback, too, but the wrestlers again come up with a basketball and another miss. This time, Skinner, four chances and four misses for the wrestlers. Dodging a bullet there. Lady Cougars bring it back the other way with V Hill into the front court. I'll take that any day. And when you've got a six foot six frame under there like Smith, you're not going to get a whole lot of misses. She simply has to put her arms up and basically be flush with the rim as Havili takes the shot top of the key. No good. 530 remaining, still 21 to 18 on the Alex Chelsea scoreboard. Jolana Sazu back into the front court now for the wrestlers inside. Now back out to Sazu. Three pointer off the mark. No good. Stephanie Smith there with a rebound. She'll feed it back in the. Lane to Skinner. Skinner misses. Now Smith will save it out of bounds, but no, they'll say she stepped on the line. But Smith maybe not showing a lot of range or ability to put the ball through the hoop, but she's showing some flexibility and momentum down there, and she is really moving that body around and really kind of keeping the Cougars at bay underneath. I'll tell you what, though. Looking at the Central Wyoming team, though, they're gassed. I mean, these girls are breathing pretty hard. And like I talked about, you know, our bench, we're going to go deep into our bench, and our bench is going to score points. And I think that we are deeper than this team, and I think that we'll just be able to outlast them throughout the game. Puckett with a pass far side to Havili. Now she'll find Pedersen left wing. Pedersen looks inside. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Pedersen pulls up. 15-footer off the mark. Air ball. Rebound taken by Sazu. And here come the wrestlers back the other way. 4.45 to play here in the first half. Butler back to Suzu, now top of the key, finds Skinner, back out Butler, three-pointer on the way and missed from Beatty. And she another rebound shoot. for the Cougars, back the other way comes Hill. Hill tries to take it back and forth, just too much black apparel in the lane, shall we say? <laughs> Not a whole lot of room inside at all. And you would think the wrestlers got to keep an eye out for that three-second call. Puckett's three-pointer is blocked. As Beatty gets a hand on it in the corner, so Puckett's denied, and back to the way comes Central Wyoming. Butler now takes a move in the lane, shot up no good, rebound Dogan. 4.05 to play here in the first half, Cougars on the move, now four minutes to play, three-point Cougar lead, 21-18. Havili stepped in like she was singing about the three, instead comes to Puckett, now near side Dogan. 
Again, shot clock starting to work its way down. 15 seconds, pass over to Puck at top of the key. She's going to get hacked from both sides. I think that one's going to go against Beatty. But yeah, either way, that will send Puckett to the line to shoot two. Yeah, I mean, it was actually a good play by Beatty right there, but a little too much arm when going for the block right there. Well, and Smith came up the front side to help, and Beatty was on the back side. And you're right, she tried to hack at that basketball, just too much contact with Puckett's hands. And Puckett's first shot is up in money. Nothing but the bottom of the net on that one. Four-point lead again for the Cougars as Talia comes back in. She replaces Havili. 3.49 left to go here in the first half of play. 22 to 18. Puckett's second shot on the way. That one is up and good. 23 to 18. Cougars back up by five. Need a couple of defensive stops here to try to get this lead because it really kind of feels like five points is just not comfortable enough at this point in the game, Dave. Lindy's a lot like Preston Christensen. She's kind of range, and I don't think I've ever seen him miss a free throw. Now Butler back across the way underneath, finds Smith. Smith looked like she flopped that head up a little bit. Contact perhaps, but no call. Missed shot. Rebound Cougars, and now a chance to extend that lead a little bit here as Hill goes up top to Dogan. Dogan now Federson as they'll work it around the horn. Near side Sparks back up to Dogan. Dogan now tries to make a move, and she's going to get bumped. That's a good call right That's there. That's going to go against Sazu, I believe. Yep, Sazu just threw her hip out just enough. Yeah, the just referee to get it. away, but you're absolutely right. Enough contact there. Sazu not a, a fan of the well, call. It, but... it, it, was a, it, was, it was blatant. I mean, you could see it clearly. I mean, it was yeah. real subtle, but you could see it. It was so wide open. Inbounds pass to Vigil. Quick three-pointer off the mark. No good. Rebound still up in the air, but it comes down into the hands of Kiera Skin. And back the other way come the wrestlers. Beal really could have used that shot. But Central Wyoming on the move now. Sazu in the lane. Shot up. No good. Plenty of contact there from the Cougars. And then a travels called underneath. Just good defense there from Federson and Talia. As they take up both sides of Sazu and do not let her have any freedom. But not only that, but forcing the travel and not getting the foul. Sazu's really flustered right now, you can tell. And she's working on Callie Federson. Callie's going to make her pay for it. Now V Hill works it back the other way, top of the key, shakes her defender, high up off the glass, no good. Back up again it goes. But that one, I think, just somebody pushing it back up off. And Sazu comes away with a rebound now for the wrestlers with 240 and counting here in the first half of play. 23 to 18, Cougars with a five point lead on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Near side, Beatty has it knocked away by V Hill, but Beatty gets it back, picks up her dribble though. Now she'll take it back inside. In the paint, passes it straight into the hands of Liz Dogan, and Dogan will take it. Fast break the other way, two-on-two opportunity. She'll take it high up off the glass and draw the foul. That looks like it's going to be on 32 Skinner. Is going to pick up her first. And I'll tell you this, for all the pressure they put on that post, they have not been able to force Stephanie Smith to foul, and that certainly favors Central Wyoming at this point. Well, she's gotten away with a lot of body contact in there, and, uh, you know, I think yeah, it could go the other way. I mean, we saw that Hannah Sparks go in there. It could have been called both ways. First but... foul called on Skinner. Dogan will hit that first shot, 24-18. to 18. So right now the Cougars at least – getting this lead up a little bit from the free throw line, getting the opportunities and taking them when they're given. Well, that may be where this game comes down to is that free throw line as well. So. Absolutely. Second shot from Dogan, a high arcing shot off the back iron, no good. See what you did, Dave. Stephanie Smith there with a the rebound for the wrestlers. 2.15 left to go here in the first half. Into the front court comes LaShira Butler. Butler now goes off to Skinner. Skinner, no dribble. She'll come up top instead to Sazu. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Sazu, no penetration opportunity there. She'll come back out to Butler. 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Butler almost loses it off her foot. Gets a pass off to Smith. And Smith using the glass there to get it to go through. Four-point game once again, 24-20. Up front now, Dogan head fakes the three. Comes to V Hill now near side. Talia. Talia trying to figure out what she wants to do. Now she'll take one dribble and come up to Sparks. Sparks now tries to work around a Federson screen. Has her shot blocked by Smith. And they're going to say last touch by Hannah Sparks. She hit her on the out of head. bounds with it. She was going out of bounds when Smith blocked it down right onto Hannah's top of her noggin. I don't mind the aggression. And I don't mind challenging Smith. But so far, it has not worked for the Cougars as she's either been able to block them away or just knocked her shot off, but not getting her to foul. So credit Smith for that. Now near side, she'll take another shot back to back for Smith off the glass and she brings it back to a two point game right now. The Cougars with no answer for the six foot six Stephanie Smith. Up top, no Italia, she'll come to Federson. 115 to play here in the first half, far side to Sparks. 
Left wing, she looks down low, comes Dogan, top of the key. She'll take the shot. Off the back iron, no good. Bounces around. Fetterson there with a the rebound. She'll clear it out to the Cougars. One minute left to go here in the first half. Up top, B Hill now sparks far side. Talia, left wing. Looks inside, looks up top. Now she'll dribble once and come to Dogan. 51 seconds of counting. Dogan top of the key. She makes a move. Back out to Talia. 15-footer off the mark. No good. Rebound again taken by Fetterson. Working hard down low. Back out to Sparks. Off the glass and good. Hannah Sparks have to call that one in horse, but not just in regular collegiate athletics. And Sparks <laughs> gets it to go through for the four-point lead. 26-22, 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. As Butler brings it up for Central Wyoming, works towards the right side of the floor. 24 seconds. Now in the paint finds Jocelyn Jones. Jones tries to work around Talia, and she will be fouled. And that's going to be a one-and-one opportunity now as the Cougars are entering the bonus at 17 fouls. So Jocelyn Jones with a chance at the one-and-one here. And that's foul number two on Talia. Shot up and good. So Jocelyn Jones earns the right to take another. 22.8 seconds remaining here in the first half. 26-23. As looks like Sazu will come out of the ballgame, replaced by Hannah Beatty for the wrestlers. Meanwhile, Puckett back in for Noah Talia. Gee, I wonder what Coach Harnish might want to try to do here. As he brings his three-point specialist in for the final 22.8. Second shot from Jocelyn Jones on the way. Up and it is good. So again, if it becomes a free throw contest, both teams right now taking care of business from the charity stripe. Under 20 seconds to play, Sparks brings it into the front court now for the Cougars, leading by two. 26-24 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Sparks near side, 10 seconds up top. Puckett wants a three, but right there with her is Skinner. Back to Puckett. Now she'll pull the trigger from outside and hits it. Lindy Puckett from downtown. Two seconds, one second, and time will expire. Half-court shot well off the mark. And off the Lindy Puckett three as time expires in the first half, the Cougars take a five-point lead. 29-24 into the locker room. We're going to take a three-minute timeout and come back with the NTC halftime report after this. You're listening to Cougar Basketball on Z1013. Nebraska Transport Company is proud to be able to support our local youth activities for over 40 years. NTC is a name that you know and can trust for all of your shipping needs, from LTL truckload, guarantee and expedited, to full service logistics solutions, and now our newest division, Pneumatic in Bulk. If you're looking for a company where you're more than just a driver, we currently have various opportunities for you to join our team. NTC, a company that cares. At Platte Valley Bank, we work with generations of families. Those families stay with us, not because that's the way it's always been, but because they know we genuinely care about our customers. Our willingness to find a solution with local decisions means your best interest is always our top priority. That is what community banking is all about. Local people in our community working for your success. Community banking for you. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC. At Scott's Bluff Body and Paint, we handle anything from towing, minor dents, and major collision damage with ease. Our investment in state-of-the-art equipment is backed by skilled technicians, trained in the latest repair techniques, and with years of experience. Best of all, we are insurance-friendly and recognized as a direct repair facility for many of the national insurance companies. Scott's Bluff Body and Paint, the number one rated body and paint shop in the Valley. Located at 1502 Circle Drive, Scott's Bluff. Saving money is much easier when you do it automatically. All you have to do is tell us how much you want to save and we'll automatically deduct it from your checking account and put it in your savings account. Out of sight, out of mind. It's the easy way to save. Get started with automatic savings today. First State Bank, member FDIC. We're big on you. Big on you. PSN is the Bluff Sports Network. And welcome back to Cougar Basketball on Z1013 as the Cougars leading the Central Wyoming Lady Wrestlers at the half 29 to 24 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Time now for the NTC halftime report. NTC is proud to support local youth, high school, and college activities over the last 40 years. And they are now looking for experienced drivers to join their team. You can join the NTC family today by visiting nebt.com. Taking a look at the first half stats, first off for the visiting Central Wyoming Lady Wrestlers. 
Not a big surprise. Leading scorer Stephanie Smith in that first half, but really not a great percentage, though. Three of 12 from the floor. She hit one of two from the free throw line, but she's well on her way to a double-double already with 11 rebounds, eight of those offensive rebounds. So you see how much difficulty she's given the Lady Cougars underneath there, giving her team several opportunities with those eight offensive rebounds, 11 total, and then four blocked shots to go with it in that first half. Really, Stephanie Smith, no personal fouls either. She has been a huge asset for the Lady Wrestlers in that first half. Cougars going to have to find an answer for her in half number two. Five points in the first half for Hannah Beattie on two of three shooting, one of one from downtown. She also had one blocked shot in that first half. Four points for Jolana Sazu, one of three shooting, oh, of one from downtown, two of four from the free throw line. She also had three rebounds, one assist, and one steal. Four points in the first half for Jocelyn Jones off the bench, one of four shooting from the floor, oh, of one from downtown, oh, of one from the, or two of two from the free throw line. She also had one rebound and one assist in that first half. Two points for LaShira Butler, 0 of 7 shooting, 0 of 6 from the floor, 0 of 1 from downtown. Two of 2, however, from the free throw line. She's also got one rebound in that first half. And then two points for Kiara Skinner, 1 of 4 shooting, 0 of 1 from downtown and 0 of 1 from the free throw line. But she's also got six rebounds. So, again, good post presence for the Lady Wrestlers in that first half. She's also got one assist. As a team, Lady Wrestlers only shooting 8 of 33, though. Just absolutely abysmal shooting percentage, 24.2%. 1 of 4 from downtown, 25%, but 7 of 11 from the free throw line, 63.6%. you got to think that uh, with the rebounding advantage in that first half and the Cougars only having a 5-point lead, if the Lady Wrestlers start to get hot from the floor in the second half, it could be trouble for the Lady Cougars. Meanwhile, looking at the other side, statistically leading scorer for the Cougars, Lindy Pucka with 8 points in the first half. She was 2 of 3 from the floor, 2 of 3 from downtown, also 2 of 2 from the free throw line. She had one rebound in that first half. Six points in the first half for Lele Havili. She's also going to have to wake up a little bit here in the second half. She is shooting 3 of 5 from the floor, also has three rebounds in that first half. Eight point, or rather five points in the first half for Liz Dogan, two of five shooting, 0 of one from downtown, one of two from the free throw line. She's also got three rebounds, one blocked shot, and a steal. Four points in the first half for Hannah Sparks, two of six shooting. She's got one rebound as well. Four points in the first half for Callie Federson on one of two shooting, two of two from the free throw line. She's got a couple of rebounds, two assists as well. And then rounding out the scoring for the Cougars in the first half, two points for Abby Lujan, one of one shooting. She's also got one rebound and one steal. As a team, the Cougars not shooting a whole lot better, but 11 of 28, 39.3%, two of five from downtown, 40% from three-point land, and five of six from the free throw line, 83.3%. I guess the one thing that really stands out to me the most, Dave, is the 28 to 17 rebounding advantage that Central Wyoming has in that first half, much different than the 74 boards that the Cougars pulled down last night. Well, most of that came in the second half last night. It still can happen tonight, but you're right the 28 to 17 differential in, in rebounds is going to play a role in this game i think that coach uh, harness is probably going to want to get those kids to work keep working in the paint keep going right at them underneath they're going to have to win this game underneath they're going to get their shots from the outside but they're going to have to win this game in the paint absolutely and they do have their work cut out for them again 28 to 17 the rebound and rebounding advantage for central wyoming in that first half points off turnovers leading Cougars leading that category six to four points from free throws central Wyoming seven to five advantage there points off three pointers six to three advantage for the Cougars second chance points though and this has a bit to do with those offensive rebounds from Stephanie Smith seven to two central Wyoming leading the second chance points category and then points off the bench, however, the Cougars getting 12 points in comparison to the wrestlers' four in that first half. Cougars do lead 29-24 to 24 at halftime. Dave, I think you hit it on the head. Hopefully it's going to become a uh, war of attrition. Hopefully the depth of the Cougars can start to wear down the lady wrestlers because all other attempts, specifically trying to work down Stephanie Smith, trying to force her into foul trouble, trying to do anything around her underneath, frankly, has not really worked out very well for the Cougars. So they're going to have to hope that they can continue to put on the pressure and try to wear this team down in the second half. Well, I think you're right. The bottom line is that you're not going to take Stephanie Smith out of this game. She has no fouls going into the second half. 
is going to take quite a bit for her to foul out of this game. So they're just going to have to deal with her while she's in there. They also have to go after right after Kiara Skinner. They're going to have to uh, find a way around her. There's a lot of big bodies in the lane for Central, but looking at the points off the bench, 12 to 4, this is what we've seen in and throughout this season from the, the Cougars is their bench scoring, and they're going to have to come through tonight too as far as, you know, look at Lindy Puckett leading the team right now in scoring, and she came off the bench as well. So I think they're going to have to have a big second half. They're going to have to have a, a second half like they had last night. You know, last night, Lamar ran them to death. And, they, you know, that's one thing they're going to come out here. They're going to have to have fresh legs. But going back to the, the war of attrition here, we've got a lot deeper bench. I think that if it gets down into the trenches, I, I, you know, the, the arrow goes toward the Cougars. See some of the Cougar men in the house tonight. Obviously, they saw their season come to a close last night in Powell, Wyoming, against the Northwest Wyoming Trappers. Tough contest there, the number one seed in the Region 9 tournament. They're hosting the entire thing in Powell, Wyoming, but they come up with a victory, 101-77 to over the guys last night. So, you know, so many times we covered the guys this season, Dave. They fought, they scraped, they worked against adversity. So many times came down to the stretch, they just kind of wouldn't have things fall their way there at the end of the season, but uh, certainly had their work cut out for them last night against Northwest Wyoming, and they do find their season coming to a close last night after a 101-77 loss to the Trappers. So the guys are done, but obviously uh, it's been a, a good time covering them this season, and obviously they have never had any lack of excitement when we've covered their games either. No, and, and like you said, it was sad to see their season come to an end, but at least they got that opportunity with that big win over Lamar last Saturday. Right. I mean, that, that was a very emotional win. I know they had almost a week to prepare for Northwest, but it's going to take a lot longer than that. Northwest is a great basketball team there, and, you know, they're going to go deep, if not win the Region 9 in the men's uh, side of things. But I know the Cougars were happy to get their opportunity to go down and at least play in that second round against Northwest and, uh, you know, took advantage of it. So the guys do find their season over after last night's loss, but the ladies at least have another half to go. Hopefully they can get things done and move on to tomorrow night's championship round here at Cougar Palace. But they've still got 20 minutes of basketball yet to get through, and a tough opponent in central Wyoming. The wrestlers are certainly not going to go away quietly. The number two seed out of the north versus the number one seed out of the south. Second half action coming up in just a few moments. We'll get, take another three-minute timeout and come back with a second half after this. You're listening to Cougar Basketball on Z1013. Shank Roofing is here even after the disaster has been cleaned up. Family owned and operated, Shank Roofing stands behind all of their projects. New roof or just a leak, Shank Roofing guarantees. You have our name on it. Call for an appointment today, 632-6156. That's 632-6156. What sets Century Lumber apart? Well, that's easy. At Century Lumber Center, they're committed to providing their customers with quality products and outstanding service at competitive pricing that you've grown to expect. With a sales staff with over 80 years of experience, they're there to assist you with all of your projects from start to finish. Stop in today and let them help you with all of your hardware and construction needs. Let Century Lumber earn your business today. Century Lumber Center, 1725 East Overland in Scotts Bluff. Where can you start a career that puts you in demand? At Western Nebraska Community College, you can choose from programs designed to launch your career or give it a complete makeover. Class sizes are small, so you get more personal attention with your instructors. Flexible class schedules and online programs make it convenient. Western Nebraska Community College. Start here, get there. Nebraska, Colorado, South Dakota, and Wyoming residents all enjoy our low in-state tuition. Summer classes begin June 2nd. Fall classes begin August 18th. Every Everyone you meet is a potential customer. If you're wearing your company's logo on your shirt, jacket, or hat, you're promoting your company. And since it's that simple, get your employees to advertise for you too by wearing your company's product. It just makes good business sense. In stitches and ad specialties can put your brand on anything. Keep your name in front of those customers and give your company a professional edge with products from ad specialties. Downtown Scotts Bluff on 17th Street. In stitches and ad specialties. Fast, fair, friendly. 
Waste Connections of Nebraska Incorporated provides the following services. Residential, commercial, roll-off, and rural collection services. With the transfer station open to the public Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Main office business hours are Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. Closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Waste Connections of Nebraska for all your waste needs. Located at 710 Country Club Road in Gearing. Or give them a call at 308-632-6060. Are you looking for a place with a great family atmosphere or a place you can just watch the big game? Well, head on over to Bacharach's at 1402 East 20th Street in Scotts Bluff. With great lunch specials and great appetizers, including wings and steak nachos, you can't go wrong at Bacharach's. Try their new salad bar for $5.99 for one trip or $7.99 all you can eat. College and high school students show your student ID and receive 15% off. Only at Bacharach's, 1402 East 20th Street in Scotts Bluff, a proud supporter of high school and college athletics. ESM is the Bluff Sports Network. And welcome back to Cougar Basketball on Z1013. Just getting ready to wrap up the NTC halftime report as we are just about ready to get the second half underway here from Cougar Palace. Region 9 tournament in full swing as NJC punching their ticket to the championship game tomorrow night as they pick up a victory here. In the game right before ours against Northwest Wyoming, knocking off the Lady Trappers 79-65. to So if the Cougars can pull out the victory here tonight, they'll get the rubber match tomorrow night when it really matters. Of course, NJC knocking off the Cougars once this season here at Cougar Palace. The Cougars returning the favor, knocking off NJC at their place in Sterling. So if the Cougars can finish up here with the Central Wyoming wrestlers tonight and move on to tomorrow night, again, what a good matchup that would be against... A team that they are one and one on the season against, and again, for that Region 9 championship here at Cougar Palace tomorrow, but obviously still plenty of work left to do as they only have a five-point lead at the half, 29-24 to here against the Central Wyoming wrestlers in the semifinals of the Region 9 tournament here at Cougar Palace. Getting ready to wrap up the NTC Halftime Report. Again, want to thank NTC. They are proud to support local youth, high school, and college activities over the last 40 years, and they are now looking for experienced drivers to join their team. You can join the NTC family today by visiting nebt.com. I want to thank our Bluff Sports Network sponsors, too, for bringing you not only WNCC action, but, of course, high school action, as we heard the Scotts Bluff Lady Bearcats falling yesterday to Lincoln Pius the 10th. Thanks to the Bluff Sports Network sponsors for bringing you athletics across the Bluff Sports Network. They are Runza, West Coast Logos, Nebraska Transport Company, Platte Valley Company, Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, Waste Connections, First State Bank, Shank Roofing, Scotts Bluff Screen Printing, Advertising Specialties, WNCC, Back Racks, High Tech Auto, Century Lumber, and Caddies. Make sure you thank them for bringing you WNCC athletics and high school sports across the Bluff Sports Network as we are underway. Central Wyoming starts with the ball here in the second half. And again, Lashira Butler trying to work her way in, forcing up a shot, and she will draw the foul against Liz Dogan. That's going to be number one on Dogan. Just 12 seconds gone here in the second half as Butler hits the first free throw. Again, not a very big player, just five foot two, but she certainly is not intimidated to work it inside that post and try to force up a shot and at least draw a foul, which is pretty easy to do when you're that small working against girls that you're giving up so much size to. Butler hits both free throws and she makes it a three-point game. 29-26 pass from Federson to Dogan along the baseline. Nearly gets away but Dogan able to get it back out to Havili. And now the Cougars setting up the offense. Shot taken by Havili. Pretty shot just outside the top of the key. Long two-pointer goes off the V-Hill assist and the Cougars back up by five. 31-26 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Butler now brings it into the front court once again for the wrestlers. Tries to move around to Stephanie Smith's screen, but even she doesn't give her enough room. She has to bring it back out. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Goes far side to Sazu. Sazu now working against Dobby Luhan. Finds a Luhan. Finds a little room around the right side. And straight up goes around Luhan for the two-point bucket. 31-28 on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. Just a minute gone. Vigil into the front court. Almost slides that back foot. Avoids the travel, however, off to Federson. Now Lujan back up to V Hill. V Hill near side, Liz Dogan. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Dogan looking low. Now she'll come up top to Havili. Havili far side, Federson long two pointer right through the net. 
Pretty shot from Pedersen. She was left all alone on an island, and she makes the wrestlers pay, extending the lead back to five. 33-28, 18 and a half left to go in the ballgame from Cougar Palace. It's going to be important for the Cougars right now to answer every shot that Central takes. And shot from the top of the key, off the mark, no good from Skinner, and fighting for the rebound, Dogan will draw the foul. I think that's, are they going to call that on? good position. No, they're going to call that on Butler. And Butler, finally, yep. that size works against her as she tries to come up the backside of Dogan, and she'll be whistled for her second foul as V Hill will now bring it up for the Cougars, leading by five. Chance to extend it here on this offensive possession. Up top, Havili working with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Near side, left wing, Lujan. Lujan now down low, finds Dogan. Dogan, no room on the double team. Cross court pass to Federson now on the baseline. Lujan back out, Havili. Long two pointer off the mark, no good. Rebound cleared by Kiera Skinner for the wrestlers. And back the other way comes LaShira Butler working left to right on your radio dial. Liz was just out of position for that rebound. She was moving a little bit more toward the backcourt there as the ball was coming down, just out of position to catch it. Butler now takes it inside, then she'll dish it back out. Three-pointer on the way, no good, but Stephanie Smith able to track down the rebound. However, again, stepping on that baseline as she comes up with a basketball. And the turnover gives the ball back to the Cougars. Another chance to extend this five-point lead as the wrestlers come up empty on that trip. 17-35 and counting here in the ballgame. 33-28, Beehill brings it across the timeline. Into the front court now, tries to go around a Havili screen, but Butler squirts around that one quickly. Up top now, Havili with it, 15 seconds on the shot clock. V Hill near side, looking low, now top of the key to Dogan. She'll back it outside the perimeter now. Federson far side, head takes the three, six seconds along the baseline, loses it out of bounds. Last touched by Central Wyoming, but just five seconds left on the shot clock, so the wrestlers doing a good job of shutting the Lady Cougars down on this possession. Inbounds pass, Lujan surveys the scene. Now she'll go far side, Dogan just gets the pass in. Dogan now swings one up in the paint, shot no good, but she's gonna go to the line to shoot two. Again, a good aggressive move there by Dogan and it sends her to the line. That's the first foul on Stephanie Smith here. That's exactly what they wanna do. They need to go right at her and get her into some foul trouble, put her back on the bench for a little while and give us a chance to work inside that paint. And most importantly, gotta hit these free throws too as Dogan finally Gets the plan to work as they go straight to Smith. And instead of the block, this time she gets the foul, like you say, but just the first on her. But Dogan will hit that first free throw shot. How important was that? And a timeout's going to be called on the floor. We will keep it right here. It's kind of ice in the kicker. I think so. <laughs> Dogan does extend the lead to six with that first shot. 34-28 on the Alex Tilsey scoreboard. 17-12 left to go in this ball game. So far, so good for the Cougars. I mean, they really haven't extended the lead a whole lot, Dave, but you can tell the game plan is there, and they are certainly starting to rile up, I think, the wrestlers a little bit, not giving them anything easy. And now that first foul on Stephanie Smith, probably just a little bit of a sigh of relief down there. Coach Harnish was probably starting to wonder if they were ever going to get her to foul. Well, and I think the entire building in here, it, every spectator in here is waiting for this Cougar team to ignite like they did last night. And, and if there's anybody that can make the adjustments, Coach Dave Harnish. I mean, Dave will find those adjustments. He'll make them, and these kids will execute it. They execute it like they did last night. They're, they're going to be in good shape. But right now, Dogan's got to hit the second free throw and get a little more breathing room in between the two teams. As she puts up her second shot. It's up and oh, good. And again, this is a team that uh, the Cougars have beaten twice this season, 67-48 back in November 22nd and 51-40 to on December 5th. Key words in that sentence, November and December. Exactly. Long time ago, as Stephanie Smith can't handle the pass underneath, and it goes all the way into the corner, but the wrestlers somehow keep it alive. 13 seconds, now Butler head fakes a three. Dogan right there with her. Now she'll work around Butler along the baseline. Shot up, no good. Havili gets... A nice box out there against Smith, and she'll come away with a rebound for the Cougars. Back to the way with it, Abby Lujan. As the Cougars with a seven-point lead, trying to extend it here. Dogan up top, now near side, Lujan. Good ball movement by the Cougars here. Avili now works back and forth across the paint, goes back out to V Hill. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Dogan penetrates, blocked out by Smith. And again, going right after her, but Smith with a good clean block there, knocks it out of bounds, disrupts the offense. Nine seconds left on the Cougar shot clock. I'll take that any day of the week because you're going to get a hand on a wrist somewhere in there and get her to foul as long as she's the one knocking it out of bounds. Lujan quickly into Havili who pulls the trigger. Long two-pointer, no good, but 
right onto the floor goes Lujan to fight for a possession error was going to favor the Cougars here on the jump ball. What a good effort there by Lujan, not letting that ball get away. That's Aubie's been playing inspired. She played inspired last night. She had a great game last night. She's played really well down the stretch. And this is this is a player that does not want to see her season come to an end. Well, Lujan truly pounced on that basketball, too. That was great hustle. And now, and now there's a coach discussion. Coach Cyril Stavenberg still trying to get some explanation. I think he somehow wants the ball back, but the possession arrow clearly was favoring well, the if Cougars. He, if he wants the ball back, Aubie was laying there with it in her hands. <laughs> yeah, there's really not a whole lot to dispute. Inbounds pass, Lujan trying to find somebody. Now finds Federson along the baseline, just beating the five-second count. Federson turns it around several times, tries to get the shot off. Havili there with a the rebound back out to Havili, or rather Behill. Behill shot no good. She'll try again. This one rolls off. Havili with a rebound and the put back. And that's what the Cougars like to see. Maybe not hitting those first two or three shots, but as long as you can keep getting opportunities, Eventually, you're going to get some to fall, and Havili ends up with a two to make it a 37-28 lead now for the Cougars. And Smith was a non-factor in there on and that. Smith and Smith gets ball. blocked by V Hill, but they're going to bail her out with a foul. Looked like V Hill got good position on that one and got the hand right on the ball to keep Smith from following through on that shot. I guess she got her pinky. But I don't know. Give her the foul call. And like you say, several times, Stephanie Smith maybe should have been called for some contact, but that time... They're going to say before the shot, though, so it won't be a shooting foul in any case, but it is, that's going to be against Pavili even. And now the buzzer is going to sound as there's some confusion on the shot clock. Well, it should have ran down at least a little bit. It's still sitting at 30 seconds. Well, I mean, she sat there with the ball for about 10 of it, so Dave Hornish is up off of his chair. Apparently, he's Court is in session here. As everybody's disputing I, something or another. Now I didn't even see the shot clock. The wrestlers are going to wisely in. huddle up and try to regroup a little bit here. Now they're going to give Stephanie Smith some shots. I wondered. It, it looked initially like it was a shooting foul. Then they were going to just let her toss it in. They actually got through tossing it in before the buzzer sounded. Stopped playing. Now it looks like they're going to st send Stephanie Smith to the line to shoot a pair. And Dave's trying to get an oh. explanation over there. and you got to keep this game moving. You can't have issues like this. Come on, get this figured out. So in the end, Stephanie Smith will be shooting free throws. First one up and no good. Is that a one and one? How did... I don't understand any of that. I don't in any get case, it either. Cougars come away with a rebound <laughs> on the two-team foul one and one opportunity for Stephanie Smith. Have no idea why she shot one free throw. But Cougars have the basketball. Dogan with it, trying to penetrate. No room there is coming up quickly to meet her was Kiara Skinner. Now Federson again gets turned away. Back to Dogan outside. Hill three-pointer bounces high up off the glass and good. Bounced off every part of that rim before it falls through. And the Cougars have extended the lead to 10, 40 to 30 on the Alex TLC scoreboard with just over 15 left to play. Inside now with the move is Sazu, rejected back outside, shot taken, no good. Stephanie Smith there just reaches up and pulls down the rebound for the wrestlers. And a fresh 30-second shot clock as Butler will try to slow things down now. This officiating crew's got to keep an eye on 32 on Skinner there. She is throwing a lot of elbows. Butler with a terrible shot in the lane. I don't know if that was supposed to be a shot or a pass, but it goes back outside. Butler able to pick it up. And hits a three-point shot. That was luck for the wrestlers as they come away with a gratuitous three-point shot there from Butler, who at least chases the basketball down, puts it up quickly. Makes it a seven-point game once again, 40-33, to 33, as Federson now penetrates back out. V-Hill, no room, 13 seconds on the shot clock. Up top to Havili, now near side Lujan. Nine seconds, eight seconds and counting. Federson back up to Havili, wanted a long two. Said back to V-Hill. V-Hill in the paint, takes the runner, no good. Lujan there with a the rebound, though, fights for it. All kinds of contact still on the floor, fighting for it. Lujan keeps it alive in a timeout called by Coach Dave Harnish. Heads up play there to keep it alive for the Cougars. And that's all me again, but she's down. Everybody was just diving and jumping and running, and nobody could get full control of the basketball. But Abby Lujan, just a little more hustle than the rest, and she gets the timeout and possession will stay with the Cougars. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, I talked about Skinner earlier, but I don't know how Stephanie Smith didn't get called for a foul right there on Lujan. Yeah. Lujan come around with the ball. She was basically be, being given a three-person hug 
I mean, she was just straight up getting throttled underneath there, but no foul to bail her out. However, luckily, Coach Harnish able to get the quick timeout and keep possession for the Cougars. 14.08 left to go in this one. Cougars up by seven. They've led by as many as 10, but Butler's three-pointer a few moments ago made it a single-digit deficit once again for the wrestlers. Coach Harnish still trying to get... So I think he's trying to figure out where they're going to get the ball from. It looks like they're going to get along the baseline. Well, I missed a bucket somewhere in there because I still had it as 40 to 28 when it was 30. So I missed a bucket by Central Wyoming somewhere in there in that run. So I guess it doesn't matter now, but. Yeah, and to tell you the truth, I, I don't know who got that one to go. I think maybe it was Skinner. Well, I'm she not had sure. made a move underneath, but... Lindy Puckett's going to check in now for Lily Havili. Or, yeah, she'll be in for Lily. It looks like yeah. Hannah Sparks will be Talia's in for... Talia's out there. Ange Vigil and Noah Talia. Sparks goes in and Federson to toss it in now along the baseline, trying to find somebody to go to. Now a deep pass finds Talia. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Cougars with the basketball. 14 minutes and counting here in the ball game. Region 9 championship game on the line for the winner. Loser season is done. And a foul called away from the ball against the wrestlers. And I'm See not they quite call sure. That one on. Was that against Skinner? I'm not quite sure. So you got your it. wish. They've kept an eye on her. And That's it is number Skinner. two on Skinner. She has been using her elbows a lot on defense in there. And they've really got to keep an eye on her. Puckett now works to Sparks. Near side goes to Federson. Puckett wants it down low, but Federson instead goes across the way to Dogan. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Sparks now right wing up top. Talia now Federson. Federson top of the arc. She'll try to penetrate. No room. Back out to Sparks along the baseline. Base, or Sparks backs it out. Puckett now five seconds on the shot clock. Trying to find some room. Up top, Federson. Three seconds, two seconds. Shot in the air and good. Federson using every last tick off that 30-second shot clock before the one goes through. And it's a nine-point game once again. Good possession there for the Cougars. Back the other way, wrestlers fire up a quick three-pointer from jo- Jolana Sazu. No good. Rebound cleared by the Cougars. Chance to make it a 10-point game, rather a double-digit game here as they lead by nine. Sparks across the way, now finds Dogan rotating underneath, runs into Smith, has to dish back out to Federson. Federson uses the glass. Don't even know if she intended to do that one day, but it works. And straight through it goes. The wrestlers now find themselves down by 11, 44 to 33. On the Alex TLC scoreboard, 12.47 left to go in the ballgame. We'll take a 30-second timeout and come back with more Cougar basketball on Z1013. Pop quiz. If Jimmy has a tuna sandwich, Susie has last night's leftovers, and you have a hot, delicious, spicy Jack burger from Runza, who's having an awesome day? You are, because our spicy Jack is loaded with pepper jack, jalapenos, bacon, and jalapeno ranch. And if you want your day to get even more awesome, try the spicy Jack Runza sandwich or chicken sandwich, too. Spicy Jack's got so much flavor, we couldn't contain it to a burger. Runza, the difference is real. BSN is the Bluff Sports Network. And welcome back to Cougar Basketball on Z1013. 12.47 left to go in this semifinal Region 9 matchup. 44-33, to the Cougars with the lead. And I'll tell you, Dave, it has not been easy here in the second half, but the Cougars just doing that little extra hustle, moving to the floor. Abby Lujan, in particular, has hustled for that basketball a couple of times that have kept possession for the Cougars. And overall, it's not like they've been completely shutting down the wrestlers, but... They've been taking advantage. They've been able to hit some shots. They've been able to hit from the free throw line and still have not gotten Stephanie Smith to be a non-factor, but they've sort of found a way to work around her, it seems like, here in the second half. Yeah, it seems it almost feels like they're sucking her out a little bit farther and trying to get around her. As we saw Callie Federson do that on that one, she had to dish it on that. But And Liz well, Dogan's right going to go. The big girl's going to be on the bench. So Stephanie Smith here with a little bit of a breather as the Cougars perhaps can get something done here in the post in her absence. We will see Rustler's basketball as Butler brings it up. She'll pick up her dribble. Sparks right there with her. No room at all for Butler and she's going to throw it straight out of bounds. Intended for Kiara Skinner but that's where that five foot two frame can sometimes not work to your advantage. 
as Hannah Sparks, only five foot seven, but able to get a body in the way, and Butler simply didn't see that her her intended target had already moved out of the way. I've been talking about this matchup all day. It's one I wanted to see Hannah Sparks on Butler because of the speed that Hannah Hannah can bring to the table. And she's got five inches too. That helps. Cougars now with it in the front court. No Italia up top. Federson long two pointer. That one no good. Federson. After hitting a couple in a row, we'll come up short that time. 12-10 to go here in the ballgame. 11-point Cougar lead. And Butler working it left to right now, bringing it towards the near side of the floor. Still with her is Sparks. Cross-court pass finds Sazu. Now top of the key. Back it goes, and a travel is going to be called. Good defense. Tanya Buss trying to take it in between Hannah Sparks and Callie Federson. And rather than again committing the foul, they forced the turnover. And the Cougars get the ball back now with 12 minutes even to play in this one, up by 11. I'm not sure what adjustments Coach Harness made at halftime, but they're always good adjustments. They're always great adjustments. This team finding a way. He found the matchups that he likes, that he wants, and they're able to capitalize Dogen on his Italian. with a beautiful feed as she tosses it up and over the head of Talia. They would not have been able to get away with that one if Stephanie Smith was in the game. She's at the scores table to check back in. But that's the perfect opportunity there for the Cougars to take advantage of her being out of the game, and they do just that. Rustler's now with it, trailing by 13, but a three-pointer on the way in good as Kiera Skinner just pulls up and hits one from downtown. That is the equalizer in the modern age of basketball. A 13-point lead just like that, cut to 10, 46-36 with 11-15 left to play in this one. Federson with it up top, puck it. Now near side goes to Talia, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Talia looks down low. Now she'll come to Dogan up top. Dogan penetrates in the paint. High shot, no good. But I call believe that one on Skinner? they'll give her two shots for the effort. That looks like it's going to be on Skinner. If that is, so, that's, that's her third. Three. That is. So like you said, Dave, you wanted them to start keying in a little bit more on Skinner here in the second half, and she's got two fouls in a row here now to sit with three. She's been doing it the entire tournament. I've watched a couple of the games they've been playing, and she's just been muscling her way around. Dogan gets the first shot to go through, extends the lead to 11 once again, 47-36 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. 11.05 left to play in this one. Federson sits, replaced by V. Hill. Second shot from Dogan on the way as substitutions kind of moving back and forth. Central Wyoming brings in another sub. Jocelyn Jones back in. She replaces Kiera Skinner. I want to see V. Hill go right over the top of Smith and get this rebound if she needs to. I'm kidding, Ange. <laughs> Dogan's second shot up, and that one is good, so no need. And the Cougars up by 12, 48, 36, 11 minutes left to play. In this Region 9 semifinal matchup at Cougar Palace, Butler working against V Hill. Now Butler will work it towards the middle of the floor, taken away by V Hill. Nice steal. Now she finds Hannah Sparks on the move, end to end, shot up, no good, but the foul. As Hannah Beatty gets down there late to disrupt the play, but V Hill just straight up took it away from Butler. Butler had nothing to do. Hannah couldn't quite get a handle on the ball. Had she got a clean handle on that, nobody would have caught her. No, because I'm pretty sure that on a good day, Beatty is not going to chase down Hannah Sparks. But that time she does just that. Sparks will have to earn it at the line. Hits the first, 49-36 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. And now Butler will sit down. She's going to be replaced by Heather Townsend. I am thoroughly impressed with the guard play by the Cougars oh, here yeah. tonight. Second shot also good from Sparks as she hits them both 50 to 36, 14 point Cougar lead now as they start imposing their will a little bit here on the wrestlers in the second half. Almost another steal and now it is taken away by Sparks. Now she's going to take it end to end all by herself up off the glass and good. Hannah Sparks not to be denied that time and now just like a couple of bumblebees. Angela V. Hill and Hannah Sparks all over the ball carriers for the wrestlers. Back the other way stolen again by V. Hill. Off the pass from Sazu, and now V Hill with a cross court pass to Dogan into the front court. Now she'll slow it down back to V Hill in the paint. Tries to weave one underneath to tell you, turn around, Chupper misses. Oh. oh, wow. That would have sent the Cougar fans on their feet. Great move by Talia. Just could not get it to connect. Must have been kryptonite. But right now, some defense being applied by the Cougars. And another steal as Talia is going to take it away and be fouled on her way to the floor. I think they might call that on Noah. No, nope, they're going to call that one on Jocelyn Jones. 
That's her first. Wow, what effort out of the Cougars here in these last couple of minutes. The Rustlers are just straight up shell-shocked. Tell you what, Hannah got away with one, too. Number 22, Heather Townsend, come up with the basketball. And Hannah was wrapped around her wow. <laughs> when she was trying to pass it. No call. Lindy Puckett's going to check back into the game. It looks like Talia's going to sit. Also, D Dogan will sit. Havili back in there along with Lou Hahn and now Sparks and Hill. Sparks and Hill, talk about Sparks. Yeah, <laughs> they have straight up sparked play. this team with some excellent defense. And now Sparks with a house of fire up top comes to Hill under 10 minutes left to play. 16-point Cougar lead, 52-36 on the Alex DLC scoreboard. Up top, Lou Hahn, now Hill. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hill clears it out, right side. Up top, Havili, five seconds on the shot clock. Lou Hahn, four. Three, two, bounce pass near side. Sparks one second and going to run out of time. Yep. She tries to dish it off to Lujan. They're going to let him go. They let the shot clock go again. And I'll tell you this, Coach Stauffenberg for Central Wyoming is livid. That shot was passed to Lujan with zero on the clock. They let her put it up, hit the rim, and then they let the Cougars put it back. Yeah, I think we got away with we one there. We definitely got away with one there, Dave. Stephanie Smith now clear out of the perimeter, stolen away. Luan just takes it out of the sky from Townsend. And right now the rustlers blank. can't do anything but give the ball back to the Cougars. I'll be picked that off at point blank range. Just straight up jumped into the air and took it out. 15 seconds on the shot clock now, but apparently it doesn't matter. The Cougars get a couple extra seconds if they need. <laughs> I still can't believe that, man. Yeah, that was Got a away one. with one there. Sparks now in the paint underneath. Havili, nice move off the glass and good. And right now the Cougars are just taking it to the wrestlers. 20-point lead, 56-36. Did you see this one coming in the second half, Dave? Well, that's exactly what we were talking about. They come out and play like they did in the second half against Lamar. This entire building is waiting for the Cougars just to ignite, and they have. And Butler takes it in between a couple of Cougar defenders. They're going to call, I believe, Talia on the foul there. And and Abby Lujan no, they'll was call just... Havili. Abby no. Lujan was just telling Wrong the official again. to watch those elbows. She's she's she keeps pushing, and yeah, I know the Butler listeners can't see it. Try to squirt right in between, and actually, in the end, it's going to be foul number two against B Hill. But she wasn't going to let Butler get through there easily. Butler, though, has been hitting her shots from the free throw line as she makes that one. Back to a 19-point game, 56 to 37, 8:27 left to go, and this just is a, a perfect, a perfect illustration of what the Cougars can do when they are on point, because this is a tough team, 21 and nine on the season. Central Wyoming defeated both of their first-round opponents pretty handily, and now the Cougars just taking it away. Second shot by Butler missed, and I know the fans here kind of feel like they maybe got it involved in that one. Pass in the paint, Smith knocks it away. Hill there with a put back up to Havili, shot no good. Havili runs out of room, she'll clear it out. Puckett, three-pointer on the way, and money! Nothing but the bottom of the net, and Lindy Puckett has blown this thing open. 59-37 with eight minutes left to play in the ball game. Right now, Central Wyoming does not have an answer for anything the Cougars are doing. I guess this is one way to get Stephanie Smith out of the ball game, just completely take it out of her hands and not even allow her to have a chance to play. Well, there could be 10 wrestlers Another on the floor steal. right now. Sparks knocks it out of bounds off of the hands of Kiara Skinner, and that's going to go back to the Cougars as Hannah Sparks with another turnover against the wrestlers and right now the wrestlers can't get down the court cleanly let alone get a shot up that's what i'm saying you could put 10 black jerseys out on the court right now and they're still not going to keep up with this cougar team the defense down here has been in just amazing on the other side of the court here in the second half it is mirror steal image of last after night steal after yeah, steal. mirror image of last night against lamar this cougar team just starts getting hot and you can't stop them now Hannah Sparks back into the front court for the Cougars. A whistle's going to blow offensive foul away from the basketball. They're going to call that one against Dobby Lujan. That'll be her third. Yeah, that's number three. 7.35 left to go in the ballgame. 59-37. to 37. The Cougars only led by five points at the half, but they have blown it open here in the second half. And this is a team, this Central Wyoming team has had their way with their opponents in this Region 9 tournament. Well, the Cougars have outscored them 30-13 to 13 in this second half. You're not going to get a whole lot of action taken care of if you're giving up that many points. Did you see how fast Sparks got back? Butler took off with the ball, 
Hannah able to run her down and get in front of her and cut off any pass she was going to try to make. Now Skinner with the ball. Chance of defense breaking out in the crowd here at Cougar Palace as they are feeling it. They want to get into that championship game tomorrow. Right now the Cougars not disappointing. Four seconds on the shot clock. Three, two, one, and it's just going to go through in time. Hannah Beattie beats the shot clock there, avoiding another turnover. But it's still a 20-point Cougar lead, 59-39, under seven minutes left to play. Sparks, beautiful pass in the lane. Bounces it straight into the hands of Havili. Excellent ball movement there from the Cougars, and they are all about business right now. 61-39 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Another timeout for Coach Stauffenberg and the Central Wyoming Rustlers as they just do not have an answer for the Cougars right now. 6.41 left to go in the ballgame. 61-39 to the score on the Alex TLC scoreboard. While we have a stoppage in play, I do want to thank Alex TLC for bringing you the scoreboard, especially as favorable as it's been to the Cougars here in the second half. From makeup and beauty supplies to spa services, including nails, hair, massage, even a garden center with flowers, shrubs, and more, the Lifestyle Center has you covered at 3109 Avenue B in Scotts Bluff. Also want to thank our Bluff Sports Network sponsors. They are Caddies, Century Lumber, High Tech Auto, Backracks, WNCC, Advertising Specialties, Runza, West Co, Logos, Nebraska Transport Company, Platte Valley Companies, Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, Waste Connections, First State Bank, Shank Roofing, and Scotts Bluff Screen Printing. Make sure you thank them for bringing you WNCC Cougar Athletics as well as high school sports across the Bluff Sports Network. And another rematch next week as the Scotts Bluff Bearcats, the boys turn at the state tournament. And who do they get in that first they round? Drive all the way to Lincoln to play a team you've faced already a couple of times in the season. Don't you just love it how that uh, seedings always just seem to work out that way? I, I, I can't understand that. Scott I talked to Coach versus Sydney. I talked to head coach Tony Siski the other day, and he goes, yeah, that's the way just it fell. Insane. I mean, Sydney pulled the wild card after losing to Alliance yeah. in that semifinal matchup. So, you know, that's the way it fell. I mean, It just Sydney, seems to be the way. When I was covering Hershey, it seems like we'd always play St. Pat's in that first yep. round. It just who wants to play St. Pat's? I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, the uh, Lady Irish got uh, dealt with rather handily in their first round game. Another steal as the steals just continue to pile up for the Cougars. Abby Luhan coming away with one. Far side, Puckett. Dogan goes down to the floor underneath. Now Puckett will clear out. Long two-pointer, and now Dogan goes down again, tying up with Stephanie Smith. And that's two times in a row Dogan's been knocked to the floor on that side. And I think they're going to call an offensive foul. I don't know. Liz has got a big smile on her face. I'm not quite sure, but she went down twice in that little series there. Well, that one does go against the wrestlers, and that's going to be... They called that one against Jocelyn Jones. So twice Dogan gets hacked to the floor. This time it turns into a foul. So the Cougars are going to get some one and one shots here, I what, believe. This wrestler team is more like a roller derby team. I mean, they, they are very, very And I'm physical. not exactly sure about this, Dave, because the foul happened after the shot, which means it would have been in transition when the wrestlers had the basketball. That yeah, but they have an offensive seven. It foul, should be. Oh, it's I, an offensive foul. I see what you're so saying. So a couple of times here, I haven't really known why we're taking shots, but we'll take it as Dogan hits the first on the one and one. Should have been an offensive foul, though, from what I understand about the sport of basketball. I'm not sure. Like I said, Liz went down twice. Unless in that little she season. had it, too, maybe, and then it was it turned into a well, defense. Well, you know foul. how Liz is. She's going to go for the oh, basketball. Yeah. She misses the second shot, however. The rebound comes down to Skinner. And I think that maybe uh, the wrestlers just getting a little bit too aggressive down in the post, and they've been caught for it a couple of times here in the last two or three trips by the Cougars. So Dogan's second miss makes it a 25-point game, 64-39 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Shot high up off the glass, Butler. You know, I can't say I'm not impressed with five foot two Butler and what she's been able to do, especially in the paint. She has no size whatsoever. But yet somehow she just kind of spud webs her way in there all the time. She's very, yeah, very quick, very slick. Cougars with the basketball now, and a foul is going to be called against Jolana Sazu. That's her that third. Against Sparks. So Sparks is going to go to the line to shoot the one and one. I'll tell you what, I'm third. I'm, you know, I talked about our guard play in this game, Angeville, Hannah Sparks, uh, Goche Oslin, but Hannah Sparks has come out on fire in this game. She has, she has done a lot of the very significant things they need to do to win this game, and she misses her free throw. Yeah, she does miss that one, and Dogan avoids the foul there. She comes over the back of Stephanie Smith. Wrestlers bring it back the other way. Five and a half left to play in the ball game. Cougars up big, 64-41 on the all CLC scoreboard. Off-balance shot taken and missed. 
And underneath, another fight for the rebound. Lujan is absolutely just taking it to anybody underneath in that paint. Stephanie Smith, six foot six, she just does not care. She is battling with the heavies down low, and it's turning into rebounds as the Cougars on the move once again offensively. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Villa with it, nine, eight. Dogan near side, Lujan. Lujan with five seconds along the baseline. Bounce pass, finds Avili. What a feed as Avili is knocked down after the shot, but she gets it to go through, and right now, I'll tell you, Coach Harnish knows what he's doing. They have taken it to Stephanie Smith. She may have one foul in this game, but they have completely eliminated her presence underneath, and it's another steal. Dogan gets another hand on a pass, and right now, look at Suzu. They are just yeah, tired. She's gassed. The I mean, wrestlers she... just cannot hang anymore, and Habili puts another one up off the glass. The Cougars just straight up making it a last festival now as they lead by 27 points. I really don't think this is what the wrestlers envisioned in the second half, especially keeping it as tight as they did in the first. But right now, the Cougars have an answer for everybody except for LaShira Butler, who she's the only one has in another shape. shot in the paint. Yeah, she's still out there running with them, but everybody else, hands on their hips. Look at Stephanie Smith. Well, no, I've been watching Suzu this whole the last couple minutes of this game, and she's uh, she's given up. She can't even keep up. She's so gassed. Be he'll back out to Ely. Long two-pointer. That one's off the mark. No good. But Lou Han comes skying in for another rebound, and she's going to draw another foul. She is put herself on the floor yeah, so many times I tonight. I am so impressed with the fight out of this team. They have just well, absolutely taken it straight to the heart of this wrestler defense. I, I tell you what, Dave Harness, you know, he Look loves... This full substitutions coming yep, in for the wrestlers. Dave Harness loves the... He, his, his biggest thing, I think, is don't quit. You know, you, you play Ever. this game and you compete. You go out there and you compete as hard as you can and don't quit. And, you know, he's, he's very big on that and very big on defense. As the first one goes through for Lujan, she's got kind of a Tyler Crosby mentality out there tonight as she's just kind of being the working woman, <laughs> just doing the dirty work in the trenches to make sure that this team keeps going forward. Well, and they've got a little breathing room here. Now he's going to start moving players around and getting some players in there. Lujan hits them both. So it may not have come down to free throws in this game, but they certainly are still falling. Full court pressure being applied as the Cougars have apparently had enough of the wrestlers in this one and just want to finish them quickly. As a shot taken a miss by Jocelyn Jones, that one's going to go out of bounds against Central Wyoming. I think we got away with one there. It looked like it went off on it went out on Talia. Lou Hahn inbounds pass to Brooke Zimmerman now in a game for WNCC. She'll give it off to Oslin. Oslin now working a house of fire against Towns and into the front court she goes. Ozen, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 3.38 on the game clock. Lujan with it now, looks underneath, wants Zimmerman, instead goes back out to Talia, now far side Federson. All I can tell working you. against Lewandowski. All I can tell you is I hope that Townsend has her shoes tied on tight because Goche is going to go around her. What a pass underneath Brooks Zimmerman, though, too strong, hits nothing, and out of bounds it goes. Last touch by the Cougars. Good feed by Talia, but Zimmerman just not able to complete the play. And the wrestlers get the ball back with 3.22 to play, 70-43 to 43 on the all CLC scoreboard. Barring a miracle for the wrestlers, the Cougars will move into tomorrow night's championship game against NJC. It will be the rubber match, Dave. They've yep. split the season, and now it goes to the championship game. All the marbles on the line in that third and decisive matchup between the two. Maybe getting a little bit ahead, but I highly doubt that uh, the wrestlers are going to have a 27-point comeback here in the final three minutes of play. In any case, three minutes left to go. Ten seconds on the shot clock now as Lewandowski tries to penetrate. She'll take the shot up off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound fought for, taken back up by the wrestlers. Tanya Buss. She'll miss, but she will go to the line to shoot two. Five foot eleven post player, sophomore out of Clowick, Alaska. And that's Noah Talia's third. Why do you take a recruiting trip to Alaska? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Would you um, like that? Oh, absolutely. Do some fishing while you're up there? Oh, Gorgeous absolutely. Gorgeous country. A little cold at points of the year. But the sophomore hits her first shot, second shot on the way. That one no good off the front of the rim. Zimmerman tries to push it away, but ouch. Throws it straight into the hands of Jessica Robb, who then tries to chase it out of bounds, and she'll go into the front row. She hit that right at like the she stairs there. Quick, yeah, she got it Now quickly. nobody for the Cougars wants to throw it in. They're all <laughs> trying to get back on offense, but now Puckett will go down to do the duty. 
Inbounds pass, Pedersen, and a foul is going to be called. No timeout. timeout. Coach Harnish realized there was some trouble afoot and wants to shut things down. They certainly don't want to let the wrestlers get any closer than they already are. 2.51 left to play in this one, 70-44. to 44. How impressive have the Cougars been here in this second half? Well, you know what? It, it, it's not surprising to me how impressive they've been. Like I said, they came out on fire last night in that second half. This this is definitely a second-half team. They, they, these girls aren't known for jumping out on somebody right away. You know, they, they go and they make their adjustments. I mean, they feel them out in the first half. They go and make the adjustments and come out and just blow teams off the floor. This Central Wyoming team has had their way with their opponents in this Region 9 tournament. They're 7-3. and three. They're, They've won seven of the last ten coming into this tournament. They're a whole different ball club than we've seen earlier in the season. But right now, the Cougars doing whatever they want. Well, and this is certainly a, a good... Uh good sign for the Cougars too with teams that they were beating by 30 40 50 points early on in the season then things they started kind of closing that gap a little bit but here we are back again 30 points in the semifinal of the region 9 tournament this obviously indicates that this Cougar team is clicking at the right time as they prepare for tomorrow's championship game now against NJC just got a text from Ben Blecka the voice of the NJC Plains men and women as the men fall 89-86 tonight, so NJC's season is also over. Steel on the floor is still fighting for it. Federson there, no whistle ever blew. As the shot clock expired, Coach Harnish not happy as he's going to bring in Tish Richards. Somebody's in trouble. Uh, I say it's probably Lindy. I, he wasn't real happy with her. Ball just kind of got forgotten about there as I think Lindy thought the shot clock was about to go off, was getting back on defense, but... The wrestlers with it. Six seconds by an offensive foul called as Jocelyn Jones just takes Pedersen out. Jocelyn Jones has been rather aggressive, too. Callie's got those bad knees. And that time, I don't really think she intended to take Pedersen out. They kind of tripped over each other, but the official was quick to call the charge. Yeah, Kelly's got that bad knee, and I don't like to see her get up grimacing like that. She'll actually come off the floor now. Pedersen was worked her way into the starting lineup this season, and deservedly so. Absolutely. Under two minutes left to play, 70-44. to 44. Oslin now will work it quickly back. Right side. She, she had a lane. The mark. Talia, I don't think, was quite paying attention. No, I mean, Goche had a lane right there, yeah. and she wanted to dish it. She got rid of it. It was an unselfish play, but Talia, I think, just kind of looked up to the basket before the ball got into her hands. Turnover gives it back to the wrestlers with 140 and counting here in the ballgame, 70-44 to 44 on the Alex TLC scoreboard. Cougars will move into the championship game tomorrow night against NJC. We'll have our friend Ben here tomorrow as they're going to be back down to provide coverage for their ladies. And again, like we talked to Mark Ryan earlier on, Dave, and even I got the, uh, the clarification from Ben, the Region 9 is the at-large team this year. The so at-large both team. Both teams in the championship game tomorrow have already qualified for the national tournament. Yeah, and we're a minute and 11 away from But do you uh, making... think that's going to stop either team from fighting their butts off in that championship game tomorrow, trying to get the uh, bragging rights of Region 9? Well, Cougars I just... have won it two years in a row now. They're right. looking for the three-peat. Underneath, running out of time. Talia, turnaround jumper, misses the mark. Shot clock expires, but on the floor, Oslin trying to take it away from Jocelyn Jones. But Jones, the aggressor there, gets the ball back for the wrestlers. They'll come back the other way, under a minute left to play. Lewandowski now up top. Jocelyn Jones, three-pointer off the mark, no good. Rebound, Brooke Zimmerman. Cougars will have to take at least one more shot, but time is winding down here. 33 seconds and counting as Sparks now brings it into the front court for the Cougars. So about seven seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock, maybe eight seconds, but not much more than that. Cougars are going to have to at least take one more shot, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Zimmerman near side, Tish Richards, six seconds, five seconds. Richards now in the paint. She'll push one all the way around, up over the moon. No good, and a foul on the rebound. As looked like Tanya Buss might have gotten elbow to the jaw. I think they're going to call that one on Goche Oslin. Well, she hadn't fouled yet, so she had, to, <laughs> she had to get one in there. They haven't put it up on the board yet. 10.6 seconds remaining. Here's either point at Goche. Or, yeah, that's yep. number one on Oslin. And Coach Harnish, never satisfied. <laughs> 10.6 seconds. He's still not happy with something. But that's all right. When you've been there for 27 years, you strive for perfection. You 
expect perfection, especially at this well, point in the season. He doesn't expect his team to quit, and he's not going to quit. So. Long three-pointer as time almost expires. Oslin comes away with a rebound, but that is going to do it. Central Wyoming season comes to a close at the hands of the Cougars who pick up their third.